Hi, this is the final set of videos in the gigantic Curvy 3D character tutorial where we take our models into Blender and set up for our final render, which is this illustration here. So to get our model into Blender, we're going to export to the OBJ format, OBJ. And when it comes into Blender, we're going to want to apply materials to different parts of the scene. Now, at the moment, we have hundreds of little separate objects in Curvy where we've um, created, copied, duplicated, and uh, made lots of, lots of little pieces, which is fine while you're editing. But when you're rendering, it's easy to ha <clears throat> easier to have a few big meshes where we join up um, objects which use the same material into one piece. So what I've done here is I've grouped all of the objects which use the same material. So for instance, the, the metal on the wrist guards, the horns, the, the eyeballs, the, the, the skin of the, the character, and <clears throat> grouped them all up. And once they're grouped, I'm going to join them to make a single mesh. So I can use Mesh Join, or I can use Control J. And I'm going to go through all of my groups, turning them into a single mesh each. I find that it's it's much better to, to um, group them all up and then join them into one mesh per material. Um, so when we get into Blender, uh, we haven't got hundreds of objects in the scene. If you find that you need to split them up again to do some extra editing in Blender, you can just separate by parts or separate a selected part of the object. The one bit we're not going to join is our, our camera objects. So we've got three objects here, camera, look at and FOV, which define where our camera is going to sit. So we're going to leave those separate so we can work with them more neatly once we get into Blender and copy the camera setup we have in Curvy into Blender. So these red dots here are my camera setup. Okay, we're almost ready to export. We've split up all the objects by material, uh, grouped the ones we want to join into one mesh and join them into a single mesh. Now we go to export and OBJ. You just need to pick a name and that should export pretty quickly. OBJ is supported by a lot of the, uh, the mainstream 3D packages. So it's, it's pretty common. So we're done with Curvy for the moment. Let's move into Blender 2.8. And the first thing we want to do is delete that cube. So you can select that and press X and delete it. And then we're going to import uh, an OBJ file. Just browse to where we've saved it. And you should get an OBJ and an MTL. The MTL is the material file which, which partners with the OBJ, but you want to load the OBJ. Now, as soon as it's loaded, it looks a bit different to Curvy because it's got um, sharp edges on the edge of each triangle. Uh, we want to smooth these off, so we're going to shade smooth from the object menu. And that, that just makes sure we have it, all the objects are nicely rounded. Um, if we do that while we've got all the objects selected, we only have to do it once. Now I'm going to set up my viewport. Um, I usually have a couple of views, one for the one for the camera and one for where I'm editing. <clears throat> 
Now I'm going to reorganize my scene a bit. At the moment, everything's coming flat. I'm organized it into the three main characters and the trees in separate collections. The bottom, the button right and the top right creates a new collection and you can drag them in to group them and use the tick boxes to hide them. So now all I've got visible is my three dots that I use to set up the camera and curvy. I've dragged the camera into the position of the first dot, which is where the camera was in curvy. Now I'm going to rotate the camera so it's pointing straight at the second dot, which is the uh, the look at. So the look at is going to be in the centre of the scene. And then the the FOV determines how how big the view is and how much perspective there is. So at the moment the, the view is far too small. So we're going to select the camera, go to the camera settings and change the focal length. Um, tweak that so the top of the, the viewport lines up with our FOV object and we've almost replicated our curvy camera. The one step left is to make it the right aspect ratio for the picture we're trying to make. So in this case I'm using a, a 4 to 3 ratio. Just decrease the resolution percentage so we don't have to render out such a big image. Notice that when we change the ratio it's fiddled around with our asp, asp, uh, with our field of view. So we need to go back into the camera and readjust the field of view. So switch back to the camera, go to camera settings, change the focal length. And, and now we've got the same camera we had in Curvy. Um, which is perfect. Just to make a quick save. Um, Blender doesn't crash very often, but sometimes it does, like, especially with hair particles and things. <coughs> so that's our scene set up with a camera. The next thing we need before we can do our first render is set up some lights. Um, I'm going to put in a bit of sunlight coming from behind. And I'm going to have a, a sort of glowing magic effect in front of that, um, that flying character in the middle of the screen. To get these lights to show up, I uh, have to make sure that I'm using the scene lights and the scene world. Um, so I'm just switching to the shader editor and the world shader, turning that off by disconnecting it. This should mean that the sort of ambient light is black. And then I'm changing the lighting with a little arrow next to the rendering modes to make it use the scene lighting. I'm using the EV renderer for my rough lighting setup just because it's so fast. Moving, moving the lights into place. Um, you can end up spending a long time just playing with the lights in Blender. Now I need a little bit of um, backlighting. I like using a, a large area light for my. Sorry, this is rim lighting. The rim lighting seems to show up better in the cycles renderer, um, but you can you can see it in Eevee. So 
So I've I've got quite um, a harsh light coming in over his shoulder for the sunlight because I want the the sort of muscles to be quite well defined there. Um, but I'm going to have a, a sort of sky filling up at the top, another area light. The the light I've got in front of his face, the sort of glow in front of the the mage flying mage character. Uh, is quite a, a large soft light. In the final render, I found that dulled the um, the detail in the mat in the materials I was using. Um, so it's it's not the best light setup, but it suited the the overall illustration. If I was just uh, lighting a single character, I'd probably do it differently. Okay, next time we're going to look at uh, materials and the demonic skin